This video is brought to you by Ravenscraft Realty of Northeast Missouri. Welcome to tropical Northeast Missouri. I'm going to get the car started real quick and then give you a rundown of what we're going to be doing today. Now that was an epic cold start. Oh, what a mess. Ah, oh, come on, Justin. We got our paint man, Justin, here working on some projects that Dad bought. So at the same auction that the uh, duels for the 4320 came from, Dad bought some pallet boxes and some pallet racking. Unfortunately, the pallet racking needed to be repainted, so that's what we are doing now. We're kind of getting pretty low on things to do, kind of running out, but we always seem to find more. Through a very long and drawn out process, I got the hydraulic remotes for the 4320 boxed up and shipped off. They are heading to Sibley, Iowa to be rebuilt and converted to Grove ISO uh, hookups so I can use uh, Pioneer hydraulic ends on everything that I have. And in the back seat here, I have the injectors from the 4320. In the back seat of this car here, I have the injectors from the 4320 and they are going to a diesel shop by Shell Bina to be uh, gone through and uh, cleaned up and whatnot. As far as our experts can deduce, the 4320 was missing on one cylinder and uh, they're pretty sure that the injectors are the problem and got them out and looked at them and yeah, they're kind of dirty. So they could probably stand to be cleaned up and maybe rebuilt. I'm not sure what all goes into it. I'm just running the errand right now. So here we have the cork seal that goes in the fuel cap for my 730. And we have a very chilly dog, who's a very good puppy, by the way. You're the best. So we have to get this one out and put that one in. I guess I can pet the dog for a little while too. Yep, that one is toast. This gasket being completely toast is why fuel would leak out of the cap in my 730 and then run all over the side of the tractor. Now you guys know me, I don't usually like to have stuff look like that, but sometimes you just don't get around to it for a while. And here we have the new one installed, and that's that. Come on, animals, let's go. For my male audience. It's still pretty icy outside, at least on uh, gravel roads and whatnot. Today we're heading to Lewis County. Got a little bit different uh, kind of a video for you. So here is the subject of this part of the video. What's behind me here is the equivalent of our new grain setup in 1950. This is a corn crib or granary, depending upon what you want to call it. But typically ear corn was stored in these. This is on a farm that a friend of ours owns and he gave me permission to come and uh, check it out. So here we are. So a guy would drive in here with a barge wagon full of corn. You'd come and dump it into this trough here. And this is kind of like a modern day grain leg. It's got these buckets here that would take the corn up, up to the top and dump it on either side. This area here on the outside is just a lean to where you could park equipment. This family actually has three of these corn cribs or granaries on their property that I could go look at. And this is the uh, one that I was recommended to. And now I know why, because it's in a lot better shape than the one that I have looked at in the past. Can't really see much in here, but I promise there is grain or what's left of it. So the way this is set up with the hoist right here, I can surmise that wagons are brought in from that side going this way, pulled up to about here hook the wagon up to the hoist, pick the front end of the wagon up. Then all the ears of corn would slide down into that trough and be taken up to the leg and uh, distributed into one of the four storage compartments in this uh, corn crib. I made the questionable 20 foot journey on a questionable ladder up to the top here where we have a distributor 
and you can flip this distributor around from either one of the four locations on this crib so that you could fill them independently. And here's the top of the elevator, which still has the original factory red paint on it. Pretty neat. What we're standing on here seems to be the overhead storage bin. And you can see that little hole goes down into the bottom and you could load out your wagons in no time. That giant flywheel right there probably ran this whole thing. You'd either have a stationary motor up here running it or you could park a tractor outside and run it with a uh, flywheel belt. It's probably why there's a window there so you could do that. This is the first time this barn's been open to daylight for several years. And I figure I should probably get the doors closed back up. Before we go, I should note that this building was fully electrified because of this box. This elevator for the ear corn was manufactured by the Meyer Manufacturing Company from Morton, Illinois. There's some old implements down here at the bottom of the hill. So naturally I gotta go check those out and see what they're about. We have an unidentified mystery drawbar here. And we also have something pretty unique. This is an Oliver one-way disc plow. That is extremely cool. I have never seen one of those before. We also have an Oliver on land plow. And this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bottoms. That is absolutely massive. This here is pretty cool. You don't see all of our equipment much up here anymore, and especially not things as uncommon as a one-way disc plow and a plow. You may be asking yourself, well darn, what's a disc plow? The so disc plow is basically a bunch of concave disc blades, such as this, that you'd find on a normal disc, except they're configured in plow formation. So this would, uh, does basically the same thing as a plow, but I think they pull easier and they're more maintenance intensive just because there's more bearings and whatnot. But I've never seen one of these in person. Pretty neat. This is what that crib looks like from the outside. So we went from 1950 to 2000 right there. That's pretty cool. And here's the other side of the corn crib. Also have a cool silo. There used to be a house over here, kind of where the concrete pad over there is. And they got a really nice ornate uh, fence out here too. Old farm buildings like this really don't serve a practical purpose in 2022. If I had one of these barns in operable condition, I'd be highly tempted to find a corn picker and a corn sheller and pick some corn and put it in here and then take it out and shell it the next spring just for fun. The guys that actually did that for a living are kind of dying off one by one now and if I can help preserve a little bit of that history, that's what I'll do. And I would totally buy a farm that had one of these on it just for the barn because this is so cool and I don't even know if you could build one of these now. But reskinning it with Morton tin would look pretty sharp. Seeing the progression of grain storage technology from that corn crib to these bins is pretty neat. Oh my gosh, should I stop and try to buy it? It's a John Deere 55 EB. I made some custom decals here for the 4320. That's pretty slick. Currently, the, all the injectors are out. The hood's taken off, kind of. And half the tractor on the back is taken apart because neither one of the hydraulic remotes would work. And the injectors, as you guys saw, went to Northeast Diesel and Shelbina, and the hydraulic remotes went to a place in Sibley, Iowa, uh, Old Deer Restoration. Uh, he should get those back to me maybe in a week or two, maybe. This is a rattle can restoration, boys. What are you looking so sad about, huh? Got the call a few minutes ago that the injectors were done. Oh boy. There's another job done. May as well get all the big stuff off of the mower like that before we bring it into the shop. Gotta make an adjustment to it because one of the wings sits down lower than the other. It's not really how it's supposed to be, so we're gonna attempt to fix that. Uh, 
We yeah. found out why the one side was laying a little bit lower than the other. It's because the pin is uh, absent. I just got a call from the uh, diesel shop that I took my truck to to get worked on, and it is done. And the bill is going to be about $400 to fix the sensor and the la labor involved. Ugh. Trucks are expensive. Hey. Hey, who's a good girl? Come on. Eight hour cold start. We're gonna get this thing cleaned off just a little bit better before we park it for the year. Well, that job is done to satisfaction. Now to the next thing. Feels good to have the old Dodge back. I'm over here at the other house. I need to take a look at the light situation here in this metal shed because the electrical guys, the electrical guys are currently at the other house uh, putting lights up in the big, the new big shed. And we have enough left over that they can put a uh, light at each of these points here in this shed. There's actually two of them that are burnt out right now because that's just what they do over here. Never gotten them to uh, stay lit, but uh, just needed to do a quick inventory check of what I have over here as far as lights. And it looks like we have four of them right here. And then there's another five or six lights at the other house that I can use. So that'll give me enough for a light at each point here. And I could probably put a light in one of the other barns that's over here. Got the new injectors in on the 4320. Dad's gonna go with me and uh, we're gonna see how good I am at driving a semi down the road, like the highway. Got the old Freight Shaker Columbia's, number four here. It's got like four, 500 and, got like 500 and something horsepower. My first super trucking adventure was, eh, ground the gears a lot, and downshifting is kind of hard. I'll get better. I just saw on a semi-trailer the most glorious thing that I've ever seen. It was a Kinsey 3000 four row with interplants on it. Like, that's my dream planter. I wish I could turn around and uh, track them down and ask where it's going and if it's for sale. Cause I would really, really, really like to have one. I think I need this X9 1100 here at Sloan's and Assumption. That's pretty cool. We've got some stuff to pick up down the river bottom today and I need to go pick up the seed tender that's also in the river bottom because hopefully it's going to a new home today. We're pulling corn out of a bin right now that uh, needs a sweep auger. Like a it's like a 30 foot bin, so it needs a 15 foot sweep. And we have to get scoop shovels and a broom and whatnot for said bin to clean it out. Later on, we've got to put the uh, hydraulic cylinder back in on the ripper that broke. And uh, that's gonna be interesting because the hole is like two inches bigger than it should be. And we're gonna reuse the old pin to get it home and then attempt to fix it at home you versus the guy she told you not to worry about we need the green motor i'm pretty sure that's green and one of these is a 15 foot long sweep and that's the one we need so i'm, I'm gonna have to get a tape measure and do some measuring here real quick sweep auger is secured and so is the rest of the stuff seat tender is on this ripper is still for sale if the weather ever straightens back out, we got plenty of work still to do with the 8400 and the 9460R. Head to the field plants and beans today, January 14th. These tires on this tender are supposed to have 95 PSI in them. That one is good to go. This one is obviously low. As to how low, I am not actually sure. Yep, that's pretty low. I got all the tires aired up to within uh, 90, 95 pound range like they're supposed to be. 
and dad asked me to unhook this thing here in the new shed just so it's out of the way. This actually is sold to a fellow from Indiana. He's supposed to come pick it up today. It's been an excellent seed tender. I wouldn't be scared of a Meridian, but they don't offer the newer, higher technology stuff like this J&M does. But these are good, low cost, low technology tenders, and uh, it hadn't failed us yet. Justin and I are getting this hydraulic cylinder here on the Case Ripper fixed. Honestly, that was surprisingly easy. We're actually gonna take this thing home to work on it a little bit more. Where the hydraulic cylinder hooked up, the uh, hole was pretty egged out, so we're gonna have to build that back up and make it right again. There goes super trucker Mark Goldinger. He waved at you, don't worry. I ended up having to move my 730 from the big shed out here over to here because there wasn't going to be enough room to get the uh, 620 and the case ripper all the way in that shed without moving something. But currently the red truck is dead and Justin and I are going to get it pulled in the shop and we're going to work on it and dad thinks the starter is redesigning itself so we'll see who's right or who's wrong. Given that the starter is dead on this truck, we're gonna have to use this truck to pull it out from here out to there, and we'll, we'll make it work. That actually didn't work too bad. So here's a look at the inside of the shed with new lights. Da 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 da. Wow much brighter in here and these actually come on every time unlike the ones that were in here last time as everyone knows us lazy grain farmers don't do anything in the winter months which includes january which presently it is january so kind of struggled to find something to make a video about in here the past two weeks or whatever and uh, this is what I was able to get you guys. So I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did like it, you need to subscribe, like the video, share it if you will. You got a question, ask them down in the comments. And with that, I will see you guys on the next one. This is actually the end of winter break for Mizzou students. Class starts on Tuesday the 18th. So you'll be getting this video as soon as I'm in class. After this semester, I will be halfway done with college. So go me. All right, now this is actually the end.